and I am especially giving thanks to the goddess Ischel, the goddess Ischkakao, and all of the female deities of the Mayan pantheon. I am here to do your work and I thank you for your continued energetic support. Greetings, dear soul. I am Crispy, a Gaian Mayan Pleiadian Emissary of Light. I am another you. You are another me. We are one. One Godciousness. And today I'm very excited to bring to you the true count, one and only, Mayan birthday of Mr. Joseph Anthony Arguelles, although I suppose it should be said Arguelles. Uncle Joe, I think I'll call him for the rest of this video, or we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> that happens to be today, the day I'm filming this. Probably not the day you're seeing this, unless it's 260 days from today, which is Tone 10 of the Serpent Glyph. Tone 10 represents two hands coming together in prayer, in high-fiving friendship, in making deals, co-creating, and it's called manifesting. The serpent is the serpent, so manifesting serpent is Uncle Joe's Mayan birthday. He only has one. There's no other possible Mayan birthday that anyone, anyone could possibly have. <laughs> now, um, I think it's important to notice that every one of the 20 glyphs, and every one of the 13 tones has positive energy and negative uses of energy, okay? Um, now, in Mayan embodiment terminology, there are three negative uses of energy that go with each glyph and each tone. And for all people born standing on tone 10, those two hands, here are the three ego dramas. Destructiveness, jealousy, and conspiracy. Interesting. Now, here are the three shadow challenges for all people born standing upon the glyph of the serpent. Teasing, black magic, and venom. So before I get too deep into things here, <laughs> and I've already opened a, a can of Pandora's worm box <laughs> or something, uh, I just want to say that if you need to know some of the facts related to the Dream Spell or the 13 Moon Calendar, please read this article here. It's brief. And if you want to know much more about those facts, please watch this video here. It's 42 minutes and 42 seconds, just by chance. And other than that, I'm not going to become too embroiled in controversy because if you know anything at all about the Mayan world, you know that Uncle Joe is embroiled, shall we say. Now, what I always do for my customers and clients and friends friends is I combine key code words from the tone and the glyph and I make high vibration phrases. There's lots of high vibration words and like I said there's those three 
low vibration uses of energy patterns for tone 10 of the serpent, the manifesting serpent. And perhaps you noticed one particular combination was the conspiracy to create black magic or a black magic conspiracy. <laughs> now, uh, I'm not saying that the Dream Spell 13 Moon Calendar was a black magic conspiracy, but that is a potential usage of energy for anyone born on a manifesting serpent day. Which, by the way, is in 205. The serpent is the fifth glyph. Fifth glyph. And sliding over until we find tone 10, here it is. This is the 205th keen of the Zo Keen 260 Keen. And a lot of us in the world owe Uncle Joe a big thank you for teaching us about all of these things. Even though his version is twisted. It's so interesting, you know, if you do a little searching, you can find out that Uncle Joe found out about the Zolkin from Tony Shearer back in 1970. And then 14 years later, his first book mentioning anything about the Maya came out called Earth Ascending. And in it, he had these wonderful diagrams. And it's so peculiar that his own version, the Dream Spell uh, 13 Moon Calendar, has this peculiar configuration because of the skipped day every February 29th. Now, I ask you, my friends, since we live in a space-time continuum, can you snippy, choppy, swipey, one of those days at your will? <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. No, you can't. So, right there, you should know to completely ignore and never attend to the miscreation. He gave us a lot of wonderful information, but everything connected to the 13 moon and during the spell is incorrect. Ignore. Now, where was I? Oh yes. In the Divine Mind Zolkin calendar, uh, everyone has four guides, if you will. They're kind of almost like four talents as well. Four other glyphs and tones, and you can look at it this way, but if you do look at it in a circular way, then the vision that happened to me is far more kinesthetic. And the way that you find out, here's me, I'm Seven Eagle, the way that you find out is very simple. Let me just take a sip of my cacao here to open up my heart a little bit more. Mm. How to keep your heart open in hell is one of my favorite lectures by one of my favorite humans, Baba Ram Das, who also happens to be this reflecting eagle. By the way, now, it's so simple. If you're born on tone 10, you add 5, 11, 12, 13, 1, 2. So now you know 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the tones for the guides in that order. Past wisdom, divine feminine, divine masculine, future vision. Guides, talents, whatever you like to call them. They are actual people when you spin them back. See, here's mine. So there are approximately 30 million people in the world born on that day. And I can draw 
energy and information from them. Now, tone two, three, four, five. What about the glyphs? Very simple. Wherever you are born, you count back eight. And then you count forward six. It's so fascinating that the future is feminine. You count forward six steps and eight steps for your divine feminine and your future vision. Past wisdom, count back eight and count back six. Well, count back six for divine masculine. Past wisdom, count back eight. So, the fifth glyph. Start on five and count back eight. Four, three, two, one, twenty. 19, 18, 17. The seventeenth glyph is called Gaia in Mayan embodiment terminology. So tone two of Gaia is pairing Gaia. Tone two, for some people in particular, has a lot of duality, right and wrong, good and bad, good and evil, as it were. So it could be said that Uncle Joe had a childhood filled with this duality, yes and no, based around uh, Gaia herself, which is like the Garden of Eden. So he had <laughs> the battle of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, <laughs> Garden of Eden, <laughs> as a childhood. Didn't we all in the uh, Judeo-Roman, Christian, Catholic, uh, Muslim <laughs> life? upbringing. Okay, so now, as I've told you, there are uh, positive uses of energy and negative uses of energy for each position. And one thing I always do is I tell my clients who the people are who live on those days. And I have about 500 names in my list, and the very only person for Manifesting Serpent today is Uncle Joe. Nobody else. And as we know with his work, if you look closely at it, you see that it is filled with lots of truth and lots of lies, just like the false light always does. So, in that spirit, I'm going to tell you who his past wisdom guide was. Looking at my charts, looking at my charts, it is Tricky Dicky Nixie. Yep, that's his past wisdom guide. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not. But it is, in a way, okay? So, yes, uh, he had a lot to learn from Tricky Dicky Nicky Nixie Nixie Tricky Nicky Tricky Dicky Tricky Dicky Nixie Nixie. Yes. Um, now, here are the ego dramas for all tone two people codependency, judgmentalism, and guilt and shame. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, okay, there's a lot of good things too, right? But being tone two, those are the ego dramas. Here are the shadow challenges for all Gaians. And that's a lot. <laughs> it's like everyone. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Volcanic, ruthless, ignorant. So it could be said that in his childhood... Uncle Joe learned ruthless judgmentalism. Ouch. So, from past wisdom guide to divine feminine in order, two goes to three. And standing on the fifth glyph as we were, we count six into the future. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, tone three of the monkey, activating monkey as his divine feminine. Ooh, that sounds like a very active kind of sign. Let me check my files and see who his divine feminine guide is. Wow. 
The Wicked Witch of the West. Ah, no wonder he had so much toxic male drama. Oh dear, must have been so challenging. All right, so Tone 3, as you can imagine, has its own particular sort of negative energy use, and here they are. Triangulation, low self-esteem, and laziness versus hyperactivity. And the shadow challenges for all monkeys are unimaginative, cruel, and extremely moody. So it's possible that what he learned from his Divine Feminine was extremely moody triangulation. <gasps> I wonder if Lloydeen would have anything to say about that. <sighs> well, you can read about it here. Okay, sliding across from tone three to tone four. Again, we're on the fifth glyph and we're counting back six. Four, three, two, one, twenty, nineteen. The nineteenth glyph is the rainstorm. Tone four is stabilizing. So his divine masculine is called stabilizing rainstorm. And you might notice the eye of the storm. Tone four, extremely stabilizing. Hence the name. So public face, yin, yang energies, uh, how people see him. Very stable, eye of the storm, still able to throw bolts of lightning. So let's look at the ego dramas for all tone four people. Instability, boundary issues, betrayal. And the shadow challenges for all people born of the rainstorm are gossip and being nosy, combined for one, favoritism and fury. So it's possible that his divine masculine contained the energies of furious boundary issues. I have no idea. I only met the man once for a three-day workshop. We didn't really interact too much. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. I'm just saying, okay? Now, one thing you need to know is his Divine Masculine Guide. Uh, let me check here. Blah, 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 blah. Donald Rumpelstiltskin. Oh my goodness, the lying behavior. How many lies did Rumpelskin say in his four years of office? Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. All right, moving right along. Going from tone four, what's next, what's next, what's next? From four to Five, which we call empowering. And yes, it goes up from the heart chakra to the throat chakra. And the glyph. Let's do the counties, shall we? Well, we can just add two to the monkey, which is 11, 12, 13. Corn! Empowering corn! Some people call it cane or reed or even bamboo, I believe. And it's all of those strong, straight plants that are so crucial to our life. Corn being the number one important plant to the Maya on Earth. And the other number one important plant to the Maya on Earth, the female divine feminine counterpart to the divine masculine, corn. So, am I right? Corn?
Did you know that ceremonial cacao for the Maya is grown by women only and uses no metal or machines in any of the processing? Not only does it have tons of theobromide, it has more intention than any other cacao on earth. Whew, it just made the hair stand up on my arms. Uh, now, let me check my files, let me check my files, corn, empowering corn, future vision guide. Ooh, interesting. This is weird, but Uncle Joe's future vision guide is Corny Ann Cornway. Wow, that is so freaky. We've got Tricky Dicky Nixie, <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the West, Donald Rumpelstiltskin, and Corny Ann Cornway. <laughs> oh, what chance did this poor man have? <laughs> well, we all have choices to make in this life, no matter what our upbringing, no matter what our DNA, no matter what our karma we bring into this life, in this body, from our soul. We all have choices in every moment, don't we? Let's find out about these, um, the ego dramas for all tone five people, shall we? Enabling, disempowerment, and lying. Ah, that must be because it's a throat chakra thing. Empowering, lying is one of the flip sides. Disempowering and enabling. Oh, this makes so much sense. It's freaking me out. You know, this happened to me in a one second download. It took me about three years to unpack it fully. And now that I have, it's just blowing my mind every day. So beautiful. And the shadow challenges for all corny people. And there's a lot of them, about 30 million. Now this gets a little bit difficult, my friends. This is not only true for only corn people. And really, when you think about it, four other glyphs have corn in the guiding positions as well. So five out of 20 glyphs have some influence from these following shadow challenges. These are difficult. Spousal child abuse, Oedipal issues combined with irresponsibility, and just plain old rigidity, inflexibility. So it's possible that his whole life, especially after age, let's say 39, pulling up to 52, especially after age 52, it's quite possible that he had a low vibration phrase affecting him that could have been rigid lying. Oh my goodness. There's so much lying in his chart. Not even the fictional guides I gave him. Wow. Like I said, choices. Now, um, as evidenced in this letter and other places. I think it needs to be said in truth, and I'm wearing my truth necklace here. The behavior exhibited is clearly toxic masculine narcissism. Clearly. And by injecting toxic masculine energy into the dream spell names of the glyphs. <sighs> Skywalker, wizard, 
warrior, and to some degree, dragon. Dragon is not in the Mayan mythology whatsoever. Serpent is. Jose's birthday. Sorry, Uncle Joe's birthday. The serpent represents the feathered serpent, which is the dragon energy, but it's the serpent with wings. So very similar and yet completely different to the European or even Asian connection to dragon. Okay, so the way the human mind works is by association. We hear a word and we automatically connect to it all the other associated words. So when you hear Skywalker, you cannot help but, but connect dozens or hundreds or even thousands of other pieces of information. And wizard? Do you think there's wizards in the Mayan jungles? And warriors? How far are you going to get towards peace if you're thinking about warriors all the time? Skywalkers and wizards and warriors and even dragons. I know there's a lot of peaceful, nurturing dragon energy that's being remembered recently. But 35 years ago, I don't think that memory was there for most of us. So to hear the combination of dragon and wizard, throw in warrior and Skywalker, so that's one-fifth, that's 20% of the whole thing is war, okay? So what his version represents is 3D war. Like I said, it also is fragmented. It creates a divergent timeline that keeps cracking and slipping every four years. Those four words themselves uh, are what we could call part of the psyop, psychological operations, that what he brought forward is, okay, it is a psyop. This was told to me by an Ajkish, a daykeeper, a Mayan daykeeper in Guatemala. I happen to believe it completely. And when he told me, I was like, of course. Now, I personally, like I said, I met the man. I have a lot of compassion for him. I, I think he had a difficult time in the last, let's say, decade of his life. Um, I think he was used. I think a lot of the information he brought forward was not his own. I think he had a lot of external help. And I think... Okay, look. Just a minute. All right. I did the three-day workshop with him in Vancouver in February 2001. He was there with his third wife at the time. They did not look at each other the whole three days. They did not talk to each other. One of the things he did on the very first night was say, do not interrupt me and ask questions. If you have questions, write them down on these cards. And his assistants were holding up the little 
note cards you would use for making a speech or whatever. I forget if there's a fancy name for them. And he said on Sunday after lunch I will answer your questions. And he did answer some that were very basic. I think a lot of people in that workshop had only heard of it just recently. I had been taught it in 1998, and in 1999 I learned that it was false. I went to Mexico for seven months in 99, from fall equinox to spring equinox. I should say September equinox to March equinox, and then a little bit on either side of those. And I firmly cemented, anchored in myself the fact that it was completely false. And I went to the workshop anyway because my friends organized it. Although there had been some tension because when I came back I was saying, you know, this whole thing is fake, but they invited me anyway. They gave me a free pass because I had introduced it to them <laughs> in 98. Now, at the very end, uh, the organizer came up to me and he said, Crispy, can you get up on stage and just protect Jose and Loidine from people? They don't want to talk to people. Okay, just just be there. And I was like, sure. So I pop up on stage with them. And they were, you know, getting their things ready. And I was just standing at the edge and I was like, bye, you know, and people were leaving, leaving, leaving. No one even tried to talk to them, which is interesting. But when almost everyone was out, I turned to Uncle Joe and I said, my hands out like this, and he grabbed them, and we did the double-stacked Hunapku handshake. I looked straight in his eyes, and they were not empty, but they were emotionless. They were just blank. And I said, thank you for everything you've done. And I truly meant it, and I still do, and I, I have this, this thanks, this gratitude, because I've already clued into the fact that what he provided was a springboard and a screening device. If people like conflict, they like his system. Okay? That's all you need to know. If you believe in truth and justice and the honoring of the divine feminine and especially the honoring of indigenous people everywhere, but super especially the Maya, You will only attend to the Divine Mayan Soul Ki and all of its other beautiful attachments, connections. The Mayan culture is the Pleiadian culture on Earth. It is the perfect harmony of the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine brought into the One Soul. It's so interesting to me, too, that Uncle Joe called himself Valum Votan, the reincarnation of Pakal Votan, but there was no human being called Pakal Votan. The king <laughs> of La Camha. The Spanish called it Palenque. It's La Camha, place of the big waters. 
The king's name was Kinish Hanab Bakal. Okay? Kinish Hanab Bakal. So, Uncle Joe is saying he is the reincarnation of a person who never existed. <laughs> Quite brilliant, really. Now, um, I don't know how many more workshops he gave after the February 2001 one in Vancouver. I tend to think they were dwindling after that. Um, he seemed to get more and more into the Muslim world and their mathematical take on reality and among other things, I guess. He also called himself the closer of the cycle. And when he died, a year and a half before the close of the cycle, it sort of left this gap, as it were. And this is really actually quite good because the cycle wasn't supposed to be closed. The Maya never said anything was ending. December 21st, 2012 was, yes, the completion of a 5,125-year cycle, approximately. Here's the full stats if you're interested. And Uncle Joe, along with a few other people, turned that date into their Armageddon. He said so many negative predictions about the end of so many things. And all his predictions were false. None of them came true. And yet, even that special date seemed to not really manifest very much at all. And that may be true. It wasn't like flicking a switch. the cycle came to completion, which meant the new one began. And we are just now 10 years into the next 5,125-year cycle, which is, as shown, part of the precession of the equinoxes, which the Maya call the Zek-Eb, meaning the Pleiadian cycle. Isn't that fascinating? So... He passed over. We know very little about it. The reports say peritonitis, which also says can be treated with penicillin. Now, yes, people do die from it. So maybe penicillin was tried with him and it didn't work, or we don't know. Um, I have a lot of compassion for the man. A lot of gratitude, honestly. I've done the ceremonies. I have nothing but unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness for him and for anyone and everyone connected to the system he miscreated. The time of lies is ending. That cycle is over. We are moving into the new 5D Earth where truth is our reality. It's so beautiful. Every single human being on earth has divine feminine and divine masculine inside them. You need nothing external. You are perfect. And I love you. Eat like cash. I like you.
in 